right, welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today I have another bunt cake. I'm only gonna do two bunt cakes. First was the lemon sour cream bunt cake, and this one is a caramel caramel, which is truly gonna be delicious bunt cake. We're gonna get started with the ingredients that you're gonna uh, need to make this delicious cake. But I want to tell you something. I'm torn with the frosting that actually goes on this particular cake in my own because this one is very, this one is good. It's really, really good. But I do believe that mine is better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the bite. Well, I'm going to put a link in the bottom for mine. I'm going to list theirs and then you can make the choice because if I make the choice, I'm going to do mine, and then I'm going to end up eating the cake and having to do it all over again, and I don't want to do that. So let's get started with the ingredients that you're going to need. First, we're going to preheat our oven to 325 degrees, and then we're going to we're going to butter or whatever you use, Pam, whatever you use as a baking agent to prevent the sticking. You're going to put that plus some flour in your cake pan, get that ready and set it to the side. Now, the ingredients that you're going to need to make this delicious cake is going to be all-purpose flour again. We're going to use a brown sugar. You can use light brown or dark brown. I chose to use the light brown. Three sticks of softened butter, vanilla flavor, baking powder, salt, six eggs at room temperature, and some whipping cream. That's what you're going to need to make this delicious cake, and I'll meet you at the mixer. Be okay, right now, there. I'm at the mixer, and everything is here. First thing that I'm going to do is to go ahead and mix all of my dry ingredients. That means that I'm going to mix my all-purpose flour in with my salt. And I'm only using half of the amount of salt that will be listed in your description box. And that's only because I'm using salted butter. And this is my baking powder. So I'm not using uh, as much salt as the recipe actually calls for. Now I'm going to go ahead and blend that together. So when I get to that step, this will be good to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my mixer. So that my, my butter can go ahead and blend. And to that, I'm going to add my powdered sugar. I'm sorry, my brown sugar a little bit at a time. I thought I spilled a little bit of it. And the brown sugar is packed. So it's a little bit harder to deal with that. I'm going to get it in. And along with that, I'm going to go ahead and add my vanilla while I'm doing my brown sugar. Now, this is not a hard cake to do. Fast. Simple. But a good tasting cake. I think that your guests will truly be happy with it. And since I'm on really dealing with the subject of cake, let me stop it for a minute. And the only thing I'm going to do is to just go in the bottom and kind of blend it a little bit because you don't want that at the bottom to be stuck. And then I smooth, took it off my... Ooh. Okay, but while I'm on cakes, I'm torn between that next cake being... A German chocolate, and I know which way you all would probably vote. Or a chocolate mousse. But I think that the chocolate mousse 
is going to be the better choice. So I think that I'll come back with the German chocolate cake because it's going to be harder to do because of the frosting and the amount of time it'll take to actually do the cake. So I'm going to come back with the German chocolate probably for Christmas. And I'll just go ahead and do this chocolate mousse cake because the chocolate mousse cake is fantastic. I'm telling you. And you got, I'm not going to do just a regular chocolate. I'm going to do a devil's food chocolate because I want you to be able to taste the flavors of chocolate all the way through. And when you see the chocolate mousse, don't think you can't do it. Oh, yeah. You can do it, and it's simple. <laughs> I'll let you in on my secret when we get to that point. It's simple, but I have the best chocolate mousse. I don't think it's a chocolate mousse out here that would be the better than the one that we're going to actually use for that cake. Okay, now I have all of that in and I'm gonna go ahead and stop it one more time I'll probably stop it once more as well and I'm gonna go ahead and put just run it around because the last thing you want to do is go to dump your cake and then you got half of your ingredients sitting in the bottom of your container and they've never been been incorporated with the rest of your mixture so Bring it back up. Start it again. And then I'm going to put my eggs in one at a time. And I tell you this every time we talk cakes. It's better that you put your eggs in a bowl and then you mix them into your batter than to do it one at a time just straight from the side. Two reasons. One is if your one of your eggs is no good and you do it from the side and you put it into your mixture i'm going to turn this up just one speed then what will happen is if your egg is rotten one of your eggs is rotten you're going to rotten out your whole batter so you're going to throw away butter sugar everything that's over in your mixing bowl you're going to have to throw it away because your egg was rotten if you break them into a container or bowl you have a chance to see it now you don't have to break them like I do all six at, at a time you can break them one at a time but then you'll be able to see exactly what's going on with your eggs and another thing you don't want to crack from the side because if you crack from the side you're gonna do what I used to do when I didn't know how to really master you know cook it whatever it was i was cooking when it came to a cake if you do it from the side there's a strong possibility that you can crack that shell down over in your bowl and with a speed this high for your mixer you crack that shell you'll never find it. you'll be digging all day and you'll never find it so you don't want to do that get in the habit of putting it in a bowl and then putting it into your batter now I have my dry ingredients as well as my whipping cream sitting off to the side and that's one cup of whipping cream so what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate I'm going to put dry ingredients and I'm going to put my uh, whipping cream in so we're going to go a little bit of whipping cream and we're going to go dry ingredients. Now even though you get your eggs one at a time, that process allows your eggs a chance to blend into the mix well. You don't have to wait with this cake like a lot of cakes. You got to make certain that your eggs are well blended. Now you don't have to do that. Just make sure that you alternate when you're adding your whipping cream and 
the flower that you're going to be using. And in this case, it's uh, just regular all-purpose flour. Now, you don't have to spend that extra money to make to get cake flour. Because if you want cake flour, cake flour is just sifting your all-purpose flour. What you're paying for is the fact that they're doing it for you. So, if you want, you know, cake flour, just sift it three times. That's what they do. They sift it three times and give it to you. You pay for the convenience, not for the actual product that you're getting. More flour. And you're going to keep on doing that with your flour and with your whipping cream until everything is gone. More whipping cream. I'm always filling flour, so don't mind me. That's not a lot. Right. I don't know what I want, so we go ahead and put some whipping cream. But I will tell you this, you started with whipping cream, you end with whipping cream. You don't end with flour. Because at that point, you don't want your mix to be dry at the very end. I have roughly about two cups of, two of these cups of flour to add. And when I get through, then I'm going to go ahead and mix from the bottom just to make sure that everything is incorporated well. Now, my pan is sitting up there greased and already floured. If you haven't done that to yours, make sure that you do, because you don't want your cake to stick. That's the last thing you want. Okay, I'm just making certain that the last of my flour goes over there as well as it can. That little bit is not enough to hurt anything. All right. Don't like a mess, so I'm cleaning up my little mess here. All right, pour the last stuff my whipping cream. And that's done. And as always, your recipe will be in the description box. But I'm already telling you, if I had did, because I don't know how the, um, I don't know how the frosting would actually hold up on my frosting if I froze it. That's why I chose, you know, let me just let them make the choice. But I do know that I have a good caramel frosting. And I think that it would do this cake much justice. But that's not, it looks like the one, well, I've tasted it before, but it looks like, you know, everybody won't believe that they had the best everything, so I guess that's why I'm on that page. But uh, I really do think that I got them faded when it comes to this frosting. Oh, my goodness. I taste the batter on this one. It's good. I told a story before. My mom... He used to allow me to lick the bowl. That was my job, licking the bowl. 
oil lick and the spoon. And I can do them both well. So, that was one of the memories that I had of her. That was really a fantastic memory. And when I bake cakes, normally I forget about that. But it always comes back because my great-grandson used to be my grandson, him too. He would always be there to lick the bowl, but now he's gotten too old for that step. So I give the job to my great-grandson. Okay, so this is done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to make sure I can get this mixed out. Oh, you did. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this cake to the bowl. That's going to take me a minute, and then I'm going to come back and let you see it before I put it in the oven because there's two more steps. They're just quick steps that you have to do. So I'll get this cake in the bowl, and I'll bring you back, and I'll show you those last two little steps. I'll be right back. Okay, now everything is out of the bowl and in the pan. And as I showed you with the cake price, this one, I will show you again. You run your spatula, your knife, whatever it is that you're putting spoon. It doesn't really matter. Run it around in your cake. That's to release the air bubbles. Where do you get the air bubbles? Or where do you get them from? You get the air bubbles from that mixing. All that mixing that is actually being done to the cake is building up those air bubbles. So you want to release them and that's exactly what i just did now once you release them then you want to flop it because now whatever's in there it just poofed it with its way out of it my oven is set at 325 degrees i'm gonna let this cook for roughly one hour 20 30 minutes i'll bring you back and show you what it looks like and then you can go from there and make the decision on which frosting you want to have on your cake whether it be frosting or be a glaze or drizzle be right back there it is still hot gotta wait 10 minutes before i can actually turn it out so what i'll do is i'll bring you back once i get ready to turn it out be right back okay so i'm back and it's been 10 minutes that this cake has cooled and i'm gonna try to turn it out I heard it flop. That's what I'm talking about. There it is. That is the caramel cake or caramel cake, however you want to pronounce it. And then I'll have to uh, make the topping for it. I'm going to go ahead and allow this to cool and then I'm going to wrap it and freeze it. And hopefully it'll make it till Thanksgiving. So that's what Chris has for you today. I'm going to put in the description box of where the recipe is. I'm going to put a link to my caramel sauce. And I'm telling you, it's the bomb. And then I'm going to put um, the recipe for the one that should go with this cake. And it's good as well. But that's what I have for you today. I'm making a caramel cake with a caramel frosting for my Thanksgiving Day table. And as always, thank you for watching. Chris Cook for you too. Bye. Please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Chris Cook for YouTube. And don't forget to share this video. Bye.